There was a time when uh, Abu Jahl, when Abu Jahl was boasting to his peers, to his uh, colleagues in Quraysh. And Abu Jahl said to the people that I swear by Allah and Al-Uzza that if I see this man again, one more time, the Prophet ﷺ, I am going to put my foot on his neck, meaning when he's in sajda. I'm going to put my foot on his neck and I'm going to throw sand onto him. Because the Prophet ﷺ was one of the few people who would pray in front of the Kaaba. Most of the Muslims would not pray in front of the Kaaba. Most of the Muslims would uh, pray privately in their homes. But the Prophet ﷺ was one of those few who would pray publicly in front of the Kaaba. And they got irritated at this and they said, I, Abu Jahl said, that the next time I see him, I swear by Allah and Al-Uzza that I am going to put my hand, my foot on his neck. And the Prophet ﷺ came that day, Abu Huraira narrated, and he started praying. And when the Prophet ﷺ went into sajda, Abu Jahl came forward trying to or attempting to put his foot on the neck of the Prophet ﷺ. But before he got to him, the people around him saw that he turned backwards. He started walking backwards and he started pushing with his hands away and they couldn't see what was happening. And when he returned back, they said, what happened? What happened to your threat? Why did you walk away? We, we saw you putting your hand out. And so uh, Abu Jahl said that I saw between me and him a pit of fire. I saw between me and him a pit of fire and there were wings hovering above that fire. When the Prophet ﷺ finished, he told the Muslims that this fire was brought by the angels. The wings were those of the angels. And had he taken one step closer, the angels would have shred him khiraqan khiraqa, to basically to bits and shreds. They would have shredded him into bits. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the conclusion of Surah Iqra. The first five verses are the first verses of the Quran, and then Allah revealed the rest of the verses. This is a reference here. Have you seen the one who tries to stop the slave when he worships? And meaning Abu Jahl. Does he not know that Allah is watching him? If he doesn't stop doing this, if he doesn't stop coming close, we are going to grab him with strength from the nasiya. This is the nasiya. We're going to grab onto him. Now this is an expression in Arabic. For those of you who are act, uh, have any interaction with camels and the farms, if you hold on to the forelock of a sheep, a goat, a cow, you are holding, the animal is in your control. Right? So this is a expression in Arabic, which means he will be in our control completely. This is a nasiya, it's a head, it's a brain that is full of lies and it is a wrong uh, brain. Uh, it's completely deluded. Let him call whomever he wants. Nadia, this is an allusion to the nadi of the Quraysh. What is the Nadi of the Quraysh? It's the parliament of the Quraysh. And he was sitting in the Nadi of the Quraysh when he said this threat. When he said this threat, he's sitting in the parliament, in the Nadi. And he says to the people in this Nadi, what is the parliament? The parliament is one area uh, of the Kaaba, one area of the Haram. This was where they would sit. Abdul Muttalib would have his high chair over there. That was the Nadi. And so Allah says, فَلْيَدْعُ Nadia. Let him call these people that he's boasting to. سَنَدْعُ zabaniya." We are going to call our helpers, and that means the special angels. Don't worry about him. Wasjud, you do your sajda. Waqtarib. Right? So, if you understand the story, Surah Iqra comes completely into a uh, place here. That the Prophet is doing sajda and he is praying, and Abu Jahl is trying to stop him. And uh, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed in the Quran that uh, all of this is a reference to Abu Jahl. In this case, Abu Jahl was unsuccessful. Allah, in a wisdom known to him, wanted to protect the Prophet this time.